So I have two different questions here, dear friends. Try to answer this. Why sh should you name it as wet berry berry and dry berry berry? Who are the patients who is more prone for wet berry berry? Who are the patients who are more prone for dry berry berry? Both are thymine deficiency only, right? So why one team of patients is getting wet sort of berry berry? Why one sort of patients are getting dry sort of berry berry? Okay. Superficially, if you look, this is more likely a cardiovascular pathology, right? This is more likely a neuronal pathology two different organ system itself, right? But it's just a thymine deficiency. How come one thymine deficiency produce cardiovascular symptoms in one team and neurological symptoms in the other team? So this is the first question which came to my mind when I saw this. And second, why did they use the word berry, berry? The only berry, berry meaning some kind of fruit, right? Like strawberries and stuff. Why did they use berry, berry here? How is it related? Because this is a name of a disease itself. So there should be some direct relationship between this nomenclature and the uh, clinical conditions which we are seeing, right? So, what do you mean by beriberi? In, in Singhali's phrase, okay, beriberi means I cannot, I cannot. Okay, now think deeply, dear friends. In your OP practice or in your emergency department, how many patients have come to you and said to you, Doctor, I have beri, 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 beri? None, right? But how many patients have come and told you, Doctor, I cannot walk, Doctor, I cannot stand up. Doctor, I cannot concentrate. Doctor, I cannot sleep. So this I cannot is what you usually see in your ER, right? The actually, what the patient is saying you is, Doctor, I am having very, very, okay? Since you don't know the translation of very, very in Sinhalese to I cannot, we usually miss out these kind of cases. This is what you need to understand. Okay, listen to the patient. He's telling you the diagnosis, okay? If the patient comes and tells you, I cannot walk, I'm having generalized malaise. I'm not able to walk properly, not able to concentrate properly. I cannot, meaning the patient is trying to tell you his diagnosis. Listen to him. So, I told you in this first slide that this particular time is present both in the vegetarian diet and non-vegetarian diet. Then who are the at-risk population at all? Patients who are malnourished, who are not at all eating or the severely cachexic patients like HIV, AIDS, cancer, end-stage kidney disease, fat diets, anorexia nervosa, bulimia, vomiting, hyperemesis gravidarum, and impaired absorption like alcoholism, sepsis, bariatric surgery, inflammatory bowel disease, or enhanced elimination, high loop, high dose loop diuretics, right? Diuretics left and right we use in your ER or in your ICU also. Alcoholism also is very, very, very common. Sepsis, I need not mention that every other patient coming to ER is in sepsis. Sickly, very common. Cancer is very common. So now you can see that time in can be very, deficiency can be very, very common in your practice, right? So homework for you, dear friends, go and find out what is fat diets. It was very, very interesting. There are a lot of different categories of fat diets. Fat diets are nothing but those components of diet mechanism or uh, diet schedule, basically to bring down your weight, okay? It can be your ketogenic diet, can be your hunter's diet. There are a lot of other categories of diet system which helps you to bring down your weight. It's called as a fat diet, okay?